So you're trying to run Google Shopping ads, but the Merchant Center keeps hitting you with that dreaded misrepresentation suspension. Maybe you submitted reviews, maybe more than once, and it still comes back rejected with vague responses on how to fix it. And that's why I've created this video, because the rules haven't gotten any looser. In fact, Google's manual review process has got even stricter. But the good news is, once you know what you're looking for, you can get your account cleared and back up and running again without issue. Hi guys, I'm Tim from LaunchPress 8, and in this step-by-step -step guide, I'm gonna show you how to exactly fix that Google Merchant Center misrepresentation. I'll walk you through what Google reviewers are looking for on your Shopify store, the mistakes that keep accounts suspended, and how to align everything in your Merchant Center settings so your next review actually gets approved. And before we dive in, if your store is currently suspended, do not waste weeks guessing. I've put a link below in the description where you can book a free strategy call with me at LaunchPresso. Every day offline is lost sales. And this call is the fastest way to get your Google Merchant Center cleared. All right, so the first thing I wanna explain is what the misrepresentation error actually means. It does not mean Google thinks you're scamming people. It usually means that your site does not line up with what you've told Google or something a customer would expect to see is missing. Think of it like a trust order. If your policies, your business details, or your product data are incomplete or inconsistent, the system flags it and you get suspended. So let's take a look at the storefront. And this is my demo site, cheapcampygear.net. And the first place reviews look is to your navigation. Now I'm going to scroll from the header down to the footer and you should see a clear about page, contact page, terms of service, privacy policy, shipping policy, and return and refund policy pages. If any of these are hidden, that's a problem. Reviewers do a quick scan, they don't go hunting for information. If it's not visible here, the market is missing and then you're stuck with the error. Ideally, you want a registered company name, your full address, a working support email, which I do have here. And if you have one, a phone number with support hours. And this has to match what you have in the Merchant Center. If your address and phone in the Merchant Center are not on the website, that's a mismatch. Reviewers literally copy the phone number from the Merchant Center and try to find it on the website. If they can't find it, they count it against you. So make sure those details are in the footer of the website, also in your contact page. So let's take a look at the home page and ask yourself the question, does the home page actually reflect the product range that you are selling? If you sell a lot of products and you have only got one or two listed on the home page, it can come across as misleading. I've also seen in the past where some stores use the same shop now button three or four times on the home page, which takes the shopper through to the same product. This doesn't help customers and it doesn't look great for reviewers. The best approach is to show collections and or proper best sellers or a shop by category section, just like here. It feels more like a real store and you're not forcing customers to go to a single product landing page. Now I'll click into a single product page and on the product page, best to keep things simple. If you're using both buy now and add to cart and you're still having issues with your review getting approved, I recommend using the add to cart button as the main action and removing the buy now button. Then make sure your shipping and your return links are here on the page and not buried. If you have them in the footer, it should be fine. Shoppers should be able to see how long items take to get shipped and how long returns will be handled without searching through multiple different menus. Also, take a look at your product description. If they are thin and duplicated from somewhere else, that's just gonna hurt you. Adding a couple of clear paragraphs so it's unique and accurate can be helpful. So now I'll open the Contact Us page. Just having a form on the contact page is not enough. When you're under review, not only do you need the form, but you also need your company details. For example, your full business address, your business registration number if you have one, your support email, your support phone number if you've claimed support anywhere on the website. If you say you offer phone support anywhere on the home page, and if you come to the contact page and only have a form, that is a mismatch and it's gonna get flagged. So let's go to the policy pages and get specific. I'll start with shipping. Your shipping policy needs to state your handling and your transit time. For example, you might say that orders take one business day to be processed and delivery can take three to five business days with the carriers you use. If you have free shipping, say when it applies. If you charge for shipping under a threshold, add a rule. The more clearly you explain your shipping policy, the easier the review becomes. Any vague statements like bar shipping isn't gonna help you during the review. Now let's move on to return and refund policy. Now here you should state your return window very clearly. For example, 30 days from delivery. Explain how to start a return, where to contact support, and how long refunds take after you receive the item back. Now, if you charge a restocking fee, you have to state it here. And if you do not charge one, say that clearly. All these details are specifically checked. If you charge a restocking fee, you have to mention it here. If you don't charge a restocking fee, it's best to mention that you don't. These details are specifically checked. 
The main thing to remember is that any information that's shared here on the returns and refund policy page has to match what's also been mentioned in the Google Merchant Center. If your site says 30 days and the Merchant Center says 14 days, that is enough for a suspension. And while we're here, if you have an FAQ page, make sure the answers in the FAQ match the wording in the policies. If the FAQ says shipping takes three to four days and the policy says three to five days, that inconsistency can trigger an error. Keep your numbers and the language aligned everywhere. Now let's talk about the product data feed because this is where a lot of stores run into misrepresentation issues without realizing it. If your site is showing 10 products, but your merchant center is only showing one product, that discrepancy looks like you're not representing your catalog accurately. The main fix with this is to stop uploading your products manually. Instead, make sure your products are connected properly so that your products can automatically be uploaded into the Google Merchant Center. That way, whenever you update your price, your title, your description in Shopify, it also updates automatically in the merchant center without you having to do it by hand. Keeping everything synced like this removes a major source of mismatch. Now let's switch over to the Merchant Center and take a look at the shipping settings. This is where you need to double check the details that you've entered into the Merchant Center are matching the same on the website. So if we come under settings, click that, come over to product and shop, click the drop down, come to delivery and returns, and under delivery policies, under delivery type, if it says four to 12 days in the Google Merchant Center and you've got three to five days on the website, Google will see that as a mismatch and will get flagged. The goal here is to make sure that both systems are showing the exact same shopping windows. So it's important to update one side so they are identical. Once you've got that taken care of, head up to the returns policies. Here you need to make sure that your return window needs to be exactly the same as the URL on the website for your returns. Now, if this URL doesn't exist anymore or the information on that page is different from what you've stated in the Merchant Center, that can block your review. Finally, I'll come back over to the business information area. So you come under settings, come to business info. This phone number, your support email, and your business address needs to be present on your website as well. And if it's not there, it's gonna just get counted as inconsistent information. And while I'm here, I just wanna give you one quick tip on product coverage. If you can only see a small subset of your products in the Google Merchant Center, but you have many more in Shopify, you may wanna go back to your feed and just double check that you've got your setup correct and also any of the filters through the rules um, through the app as well, because that can also come across as untrustworthy. Just make sure you're not accidentally excluding products due to availability shipping labels, or a missing attribute. It's just a simple check that saves you days of review delays. Just one quick additional tip on product availability. If you are doing back orders or pre-orders, it's important that you do state that on the website, on individual product pages, as well as in a product feed. Take a look at this video up here, it shows you how to implement those changes and it'll help you get through another review faster. Once you've made all these changes, it's time to request a review. Inside the Merchant Center, go to Account Issues and request the review there. And just a word of warning, don't be alarmed if your first review comes back rejected. That can happen when everything looks correct. If you do so happen to get rejected, go back and recheck the areas that we've covered. Areas like navigation, company details, homepage representation, product pages, policies, feed coverage, shipping and returns in the Merchant Center, ensuring all your business info is in alignment, and then submit again. Most accounts get cleared once everything is truly consistent. Now, if you want this fixed properly the first time, reach out to me in the link in the description below, and I'll show you how we do this for Shopify stores every single week. Now, if you want more practical Google Ads tutorials just like this one, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on the next step-by-step -step guide. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.